Hi, I'm Laura, Omni Yoga Girl. Today we're going to be working on jumping back from Crow to Chaturanga. So obviously you need a fairly solid Crow pose and a pretty strong Chaturanga to be able to complete this transition. So if, if you're working on either of those poses, then I do have some other tutorials on my channel that you can check out. So jumping back from crow pose to chaturanga means that we need a few things to happen all at the same time. We want to use our breath on the jump back as we're going to jump back on an exhale as we shoot the legs backwards to land in chaturanga. We also want to really make sure that we're engaging our core muscles strongly to give us that support, the support to shoot the legs back and also the support as we land in Chaturanga so we don't allow the hips to dip and we're landing in a nice strong line. Also at the same time as keeping the core engaged and as jumping back on the exhale and shooting our legs backwards, we want to be bending our arms more to land it with the chaturanga shape. So we're kind of almost bringing the head down and forwards from crow pose. So you do end up landing fairly close to the mat. It might end up being, especially at first, that you're landing closer than you would in a regular chaturanga but you just need to use that kind of uh, trust and strength in your upper body and in your core to be able to catch yourself as you shoot the legs, legs back. So as soon as the feet touch the mat, you're bending the arms and in that strong chaturanga line. So if you feel fairly confident in crow pose and you feel pretty confident in the chaturanga that you're going to land in, I'll demonstrate it for you uh, so maybe you can give it a go at home. Okay, so first we're going to set up our crow pose. Um, if it's the first time you're trying this, um, I would recommend maybe placing a cushion in front of you on the mat just to avoid any face planting issues and also maybe to give you a bit more confidence. So place the hand shoulder width apart. Don't forget to grip the mat, have some air under the palms. Come up on tiptoes, send the hips high. And get the knees on the back of the triceps. So keep sending the weight forwards, picking up the feet. Keeping the shoulders really broad and strong. Pull the core in and then shoot the legs back. I think there are probably three key areas to focus on when working on this transition. Shoulders, core and legs. So also when you go into crow pose, once you've got a nice solid hold, I'd recommend not hanging around in it too long, at least at first. Use some of that initial lift and the strength in your core to kind of try and give yourself a lightness so you can shoot the legs back. Sometimes it can feel like your knees are kind of glued to the back of your arms. So if that's the case, really feel like you're shifting the weight forwards, kind of tipping forwards. Think about lifting the hips, pulling up from the core, and then really thrust and fire the legs backwards. Keep the legs engaged, kneecaps pulled up, imagining you're shooting them behind you in sort of one long line of energy. Throughout, keep the shoulders broad. That's kind of going to be, in a way, your main foundation, especially to avoid ending up with your face on the mat. So try and keep the shoulder girdle fixed, strong and solid. Look forward as you make the transition and send the legs backwards and try and keep the shoulders lifting and not allowing them to dip too much. As I said before, Really engage the whole underside of your body, obviously particularly focusing on the core in order to support the landing. Think of it as being a bit like your buoyancy aid to keep you lifted and strong. Good luck if you give it a go. Please let me know how you get on. Leave any questions in the comments and don't forget to click subscribe. Thank you very much.